minutes after six, so I think we should go ahead and get started. Let me officially welcome everyone to uh, the virtual version of the National Mag Lab Open House uh, 2021. We're presenting this session in partnership with the FAMU FSU College of Engineering for eWeek. And um, just before we get started, I just want to remind everyone the Mag Lab is, you know, the largest and highest powered magnet lab in the entire world, um, and we are proud to be funded by the National Science Foundation and the state of Florida, which means that all of you, anyone who pays taxes in Florida or the United States, you are all stakeholders uh, in the science that happens at the Mag Lab. So we, we appreciate you. We are so glad you are here to join us. And um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to uh, Dr. Jamel Ali and his team of presenters. Great. Uh, can you hear me? You're breaking up a little bit, but yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay good. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Jamal Lee. I'm assistant professor in the IMU FSU College of Engineering in the Department of Chemical and Biomedical Engineering. And today I'm joined with a few members of my research group who you'll meet shortly. And uh, we work on a number of projects ranging from micro nanorobotics, um, active magnetic colloids and the manipulation of small uh, microorganisms. And today we'd like to share with you a small demonstration about a fascinating physical phenomena, uh, first reported by Sierra, Bensiglio, and Prakash at Stanford University a few years ago. So in this live demonstration, you'll be able to see uh, the spontaneous movement of small liquid droplets, which might appear to be living, but they don't contain any living part or organism. And although they're not living, um, their movements are very reminiscent of many of the microbes we looked at in the lab and the microbes around us uh, in the environment. So before we start this demonstration, I'd like to uh, have your attention at the two videos playing on your screen. So in the video on the right, what you're seeing in this small black dot here that's moving is a bacteria. And it's being chased by this white blood cell. It's called a neutrophil. Um, and this process is called chemotaxis. And Although these small organisms don't have eyes like us to see, uh, they're able to sense their environment and other organisms around them um, by chemicals secreted in their environment. And the video on the uh, right, what you're seeing is um, bacteria that have naturally magnetic particles that build in their body. And when you place these organisms, which are naturally magnetic in a magnetic field, uh, they respond by aligning themselves or moving in the direction of the magnetic field. And that's what you're seeing here. And although the droplets that you're about to see in a second um, aren't uh, living or have any magnetic particles or respond to any external magnetic field, um, they are reminiscent of many of the organisms that we, we work with in our lab. And this process is called taxis uh, that, uh, that you're seeing in these live organisms. And so with that, um, before I turn it over to my group, I'd like to mention that while the demonstration is going on, you can see recording of our moving droplets in a video playing in the background. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to my students. Hello, everyone. My name is Paige Nielsen, and I'm a third-year biomedical engineering student at the FAMU FSU College of Engineering. Hi, I'm Shannon Kelly, and I'm also a third-year biomedical engineering student here at the college. And before we get started today, we're going to go through some of the materials you need for this experiment. And the cool thing is that it's super easy to do at home. So all you need is some water to add to your food coloring and any beakers or glasses that you have. Some propylene glycol food coloring that you can pick up at any supermarket or grocery store. And then you have the droplets of varying concentrations of the food coloring on wax paper. And you can just use a baking sheet if you have it. And then to maximize the movement of the droplets, we have a hot plate right here that takes up the slides. And then it, for the slides, you can use any heat resistant um, clean glass surface. So a, a baking um, glassware would be fine. And then we have these pipe cuts with these little tips right here to put the droplets on the slides. And before we begin picking up the droplets, we um, put a tip on these pipe cuts like this. But um, if you wanted to break this at home, you could just use any eyedropper or of the sorts. And before we place the droplets on the slides, we have to clean Clean the slide. So here we have a plasma treater, which emits um, charged gas to clean the slides. And I'm going to demonstrate that 
en más acá. So cool. If we don't have a plasma treater at home, will Windex work? What do you think? To, to just clean our baking dish? <laughs> you don't have one? The lightning bolt that you see coming from the plasma treater is the charged gas that we use to clean the slides. But if you wanted to recreate this at home, this experiment, you, you can either just use a gas oven a gas stove fire, or you can use a lighter. But if you're going to recreate this experiment at home, always make sure to have adult supervision when you're handling um, the, the lighter or such, and always make sure to wear protected gloves over your hands like an oven mitt. With that, let's get started with the presentation. So what we're doing here is we're putting different drop mixes, mint water mix with food coloring on the slide. And as you can see, they're moving around spontaneously, which mimics the Puma Texas and the Magneto Texas that we mentioned earlier. It's really beautiful. And what's happening here is that the differences in surface tension is what's causing this. The water has a very high surface tension, which means that the molecules want to clump together and the bonds between them are really strong. And propylene glycol, which is the food coloring, has a very low surface tension. So when these two drops are placed together, the high surface tension water molecules will want to clump away and move away from the spreading out food coloring. So that's what causes this movement. We have varying concentrations of propylene glycol in water with us. So what is happening is when two droplets of the same concentration are placed near one another, they will merge and create an even, an even larger uh, droplet, or they will either chase one another and propel. And we can further show this demonstration with, um, you can draw cool designs on, on the glassware with a Sharpie and you can make the droplets move in fun patterns. So the Sharpie is hydrophobic, which repels the movement of the water droplets. So you can make them, you can block their movement and make them move in cool patterns with this. And sometimes your droplets will dissolve the sharpie, as this happening here, which is okay. Besides, it's a little bit of trial and error. And it might, if you're trying this experiment at home, it might not always work the first time, but that's okay. You can uh, maybe you just need to clean the slides some more, or um, or maybe like you heat them up some more, and then see what kinds of concentration of the food coloring makes best for you. We've got a question in the chat. They want to know if heat will make them react any different. There's a question. Oh, you want to presentation team? Can you guys hear us? Yeah, so we're wondering, um, in the chat, we're wondering whether heat would make them react differently. And it sounds like we just need one more broad explanation. What makes them chase each other? Good question. So what's chasing, so these part, these droplets, one droplet contains more water than the other one. And in addition to water, there's propylene glycol, right? So uh, Dr. Water, Ali, you're... Dr. Ali, just before you go on, you're, you're echoing a little bit for us. So um, okay. maybe mute. So actually, I'll, I'll turn it over to the students. Maybe they can explain a little bit more. Okay, perfect. 
So what's happening is that the, some of the droplets that we're putting down contain more water, and then some of the droplets that we're putting down contain more food coloring. And food coloring has a very low surface tension. And what surface tension is, is it's the ability for molecules to cling together on the surface when there's an air layer. So water has a very high surface tension property. So when that happens, they need, that means that it wants to clump inward together towards itself. And so when we have a droplet with a very high surface tension, and then we add a droplet with a low surface tension, the low surface tension wants to spread out. And then the high surface tension wants to clump together. So that's what's happening with that motion is that if the low surface tension droplets spreading out and then the high surface tension droplets clumping together. And that together is what, what causes the spontaneous motion. And there was also a question in chat about this, how does heat affect it? Um, in order to clean the surface of the glassware, you need to apply heat. Um, and that raises the energy on the side and, and will allow the droplets to move around. Also, around each droplet, there is a evaporation cloud because water constantly evaporates and it has this sort of vapor layer around it. And when you place two drops close together, the concentration of vapor between two drops is higher. And this pull and the forces between those water molecules pull the droplets closer together. And so when you heat up the slide, this is this makes it easier for those uh, clouds to form. Another question about electrostatic force. You can just say, you know, it's, it's due to surface tension. This is not due to electrostatic forces. This is due to the surface tension. So it's the um, hydrogen bonds that water has. So it is the hydrogen molecules interacting with each other. And they form very, um, water in particular has a high surface tension. So those are the forces that is what is making this move. Yeah, so the answer to that last question, the question was about electrostatic forces and the short answer is no, this is not because of electrostatic forces. Um, we have a few different slides that we can show. You guys can choose which one you wanna see. So we have this one, which we can raise droplets down together. And we also have this one. In this one, which are the two, which are the names of the two schools. Which one do you guys want to see? All right, if I type into the box, do you want to see the maze, the FSU, or the FAMU slide? Do you want the FAMU this slide? Is, this is our first official um, poll. So far, the maze. So far, the maze is winning, but I think we kind of want to see all of them, right? Do we have to choose? I love them. Yeah, we can do all of them, for sure. All right, let's start with the maze. That sounds super fun. Okay, we'll start off with the maze, and we can watch the droplets chase one another down. And you guys can predict which color is going to win. All right, so what are our color options? C color options. Oh, okay, so our color options. We have green, Blue, purple, and red. All right, type it into the chat box. Which one do you think is gonna win the race? The early votes on red, two votes for red. Let's see. Ooh, a late support for blue. Blue looks like it's doing pretty well. Carlos, are you going to narrate this like a race? Like a I, I, I wish I was talented enough to do that. I had a friend in college who became a sports announcer who could definitely do this. It, it's not my no, just no. Do we do we all win if they if they kind of build? So who voted that they were all going to combine? Did anyone vote for that? Yeah, I guess we're all winners. I was not told that was an option. All right, would you guys like to see the FAMU one or the FSU one? Or both. Everybody wins today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, winner. it's just like in science, we're all winners when science happens, right? And if you're doing this experiment at home and you draw 
with Sharpie on the slides and the Sharpie begins to disintegrate and move with the droplets, that's okay. That just means that maybe you needed to let it dry for a little bit longer. But as you can see, it's kind of dissolving and moving with mm. the droplets. Are there any other questions? No other questions yet. So I have a question, you know, this is so cool to watch, right? And Dr. Ali told us a little bit in the beginning about, um, you know, how some of these principles relate to uh, health, I believe, but tell us a little bit more about, you know, what does, what does this kind of fun whiz bang, ooh, ah, excitement about science, you know, this demonstration, how does this actually translate in a meaningful way, right? With your research and, and, and you know, the, the future that you hope to, to create with science. So, this we showed, so we showed a couple of videos in the beginning about chemotaxis and then metotaxis. And mimicking those behaviors in these organisms is important using these droplets because then if you understand how we can move, you can understand so much about life and you can apply those concepts to other um, medicinal advancements and everything. And it's just a really fun way to demonstrate how bacteria and um, different cells can move in response to different stimuli. I can, I can uh, talk a little bit about that, right? So these moving uh, droplets are uh, in a lot of ways really connected to a lot of work we do in the lab. So we do look at chemotaxi, so how motile bacteria and other organisms, how they move. Uh, and just studying that physics about how microorganisms move, move their dynamics can teach us so much. For example, one thing we do in our lab is we try to create artificial systems or robots that mimic the motion of, of living organisms like bacteria. So by studying how these drops move, it informs us on how we might better design our, our micro and nanoscale robots. And this is attached to the mag lab. And one of the reasons why I'm here at the uh, Family of Psychology and Humans is because of the mag lab, we use magnetic fields uh, to, to drive our robots. And so here, these, these droplets are not being dri driven by magnetic fields, but the same kind of design principles and physics here, um, uh, we are, we're applying to our robotic systems that are at the micro and nano scale. That's a great explanation, Dr. Ali. And I think it reminds people that, you know, a lot of our open house demonstrations, I mean, they are a lot of fun, right? But they actually are rooted in something really important that's happening um, either at the Mag Lab or of course, you know, down the street at the FAMU FSU College of Engineering or, or you know, around the research environment. And, um, and they're actually providing some really important information about uh, some real, you know, discoveries that could change our world. I'd like to say one more thing about this. So if you all are interested, my, my email is on the uh, is on the uh, on the slide, so you can contact me. Actually, this was actually reported in science, actually, this dancing droplets a few years ago. Um, uh, so it, it is real science, it's just not uh, fun, but it's also a very cool activity. Um, I'm gonna post a slide, I'm gonna share a slide. If you want to try this at home. Uh, I love try this at home. So here are some items if you want to try this at home. These are some items that you might want to, uh, uh, that you probably have at home already. So if you want to try it out, um, most of us have these in our homes. Um, the only thing I would care uh, to warn you about is you need to clean your, your glass surface very well. So you can do it with a lighter or a stove, but uh, please be careful. Always use parental supervision when needed, please. Especially when working with flames. Ask your parents. Okay, I, I'm going to go back to the students now because they're still. Yeah, what I've done is I've actually pinned both videos side by side so you can see the ones that you previously recorded um, as well as the ones you're doing live so we can see them side by side. Are there any more questions? 
The only question we got right now was referring back to the maze, do we all win? And yes, we are all winners. If you have questions about, you know, why this works, how this works, how to get it to work at home, um, or some, you know, scientific research related to this phenomenon. Um, you know, research actually drove what you're seeing today. So uh, put them in the chat and, and we can help get them answered from our team here. Okay, a question just came in. And wow, it's a great question. Are you ready? Um, Dr. Ali, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, here we go. We looked more in the surface tension and read this. The water molecule has two hydrogen atoms bond to an oxygen atom through covalent bonding. Due to the high electronegativity of oxygen, it will have a large portion of the negative charge on its side, whereas hydrogen will be more positively charged. This causes an electrostatic attraction between the hydrogen atom in one molecule and the oxygen atom in another. Foreign bonds are called hydrogen bonds, which leads to strong cohesive forces so is surface tension a type of electromagnetic force then? This is a good question. It takes a little while to process. No, just don't, I'll just stop here. So yes. So yes, so. Uh, electromagnetic interactions drive, uh, underlie surface tension, right? Because the interactions between atoms, the electrons uh, drive that. In this case, it's not only water that's present, there's also propylene glycol, right? And that propylene glycol, for one, it's a bigger molecule. And for two, it doesn't have as much hydrogen bonding with the glass surface. Um, whereas the water has more hydrogen bonding with the surface, right? And that's one reason why we have to clean it very well so that the hydrogen bond, the hydrogen uh, hydrogens in the water uh, can form a better interaction with the surface. But but you you are right. What you looked up was correct. Right? Uh, there are uh, electromagnetic interactions, EM interactions, um, that drive surface tension. I mean, looking at the whole big picture of of the universe and everything, um, electromagnetism. Uh, and if I remember correctly, it's one of the four fundamental forces of physics, and it is one of the major players in what allows things to exist, right? Yes, that's correct. See, that's I've a good question. Some physics. All right, everyone in the uh, audience, this is your last chance for any questions for Dr. Ali or his students. And so you're Dr. welcome for asking that great question, by the way. Yeah, so Dr. Ali and, and, and this group of fantastic students here, you know, this is so cool. Um, and I wonder if everybody in the audience would understand it, you know, for, for those of us who are non-scientists like me, you know, we think about science and engineering, you know, kind of in this big lump, right? Can you explain to us uh, the department in, in engineering that you work in and kind of how these things all connect together? Sure. I'll come over to the mic. Department of Chemical and um, Biomedical Engineering. So uh, it's a very diverse department in that we have chemical engineers, we have uh, biomedical engineers, but we also have a lot of people in other fields as well, like polymer science and engineering. Uh, I myself have a PhD in mechanical engineering. So it's very interdisciplinary. Um, and the work we do spans the range from uh, basic chemistry and material science to uh, robotics and control um, uh, to uh, stem cell engineering, right? So it's, it's very diverse. But many of the physical principles that guide our research um, uh, come back to a lot of the principles you're actually seeing here. The surface tension um, can be a, a principle can be applied to many different fields. Um, from stem cell engineering to, to um, plasma, uh, reactor design. Um, so many of the basic physical principles that you're seeing at play here, uh, we really apply on a daily basis as engineers. 
Yes, we have lots of um, MagLab researchers from this particular uh, engineering department. And of course, you know, electricity and magnetism, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, all really critical fields of study um, at the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. Um, so great explanation there, Dr. Ali. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Carlos, do you, is there anything we're missing here that, that we need to tell people about this exciting demonstration? No, we need to hurry up and finish so I can go do this. <laughs> I'm thinking about which Pyrex pen I'm willing to sacrifice to to start doing this. So I'm pumped up. This is this is incredible. I am super excited to to go and try this with all the food coloring like that. So this has been yeah really exciting. I I want to thank everyone who joined us this evening to uh, see dancing droplets. Uh, in person, live, right in front of us. And, um, you know, if you try this at home, take a video, share it to our Facebook feed or our open house event, share, share a photo, uh, let us know how it worked, okay? I'd love to hear your experiences. Um, or if you have trouble with it, let us know, take a picture. We'll try to ask the team uh, to figure out and troubleshoot any issues you might be having. Um, I, just don't forget, you can find lots of other fun live virtual open house events throughout the rest of this week and into next week, even on Saturday, uh, where we'll be having our first virtual escape room. Um, and uh, you know, there's tons of games online and videos to explore. Um, and so, uh, and stick around for those of you for when the Zoom webinar ends, it will trigger a survey um, just let us know what you thought about this session. And, uh, and one more time, uh, before we wrap this up, can, uh, Dr. Ali, can you have all your students uh, introduce themselves one more time? Great point, Carlos. Sure. We have more students in the background, so everyone will come up and just say hello. So could, you can introduce yourselves, Paige. My name is Katie Nelson again. I'm a third year environmental engineering student at the College of Engineering. I'm Shannon Kelly, and I'm also a third year biomedical engineering student. Hi, I'm Samaya Granderson, and I'm also a third year biomedical engineering student at the College of Engineering. Hi, I'm David Fletcher Jr., and I'm a graduate student at the College of Engineering. Hello, my name is Annie Sue, and I'm, also, I'm a first year graduate student at the College of Engineering. Hi, I'm Kiki. I'm first year of the master's student at the year. Okay, I think that's everyone. That was what a, a great lot of effort. people behind the scenes. I love seeing the whole team that made it happen. Thank you to everyone, all of you, um, for your role today. Thank you so much for showcasing this for us. <laughs> And um, uh, stay tuned to take that chat. And I hope to see more of you um, on a future live virtual MagLab open house event sometime soon. Thank you, Dr. Ali and all of this team that, that made this amazing demonstration happen.